In my video today, we will be discussing the illusions versus the reality, the good and the bad of the financial status of American Blacks. Once the facts are revealed, we will be able to answer the main question. Will our kids be willing to put in the work to pay the price after hearing and seeing the reality? Is there a silver lining? Do the statistical findings support or conflict biblical proof? But first, I would like you guys to hit that subscribe button and hopefully someone shares this video. I was talking to a 25 year old friend of mine and a 70 year old friend of mine. And they both were talking like black people had so much financial success in America. Right away, it was kind of dismal because I quickly found out that blacks are at the bottom of every financial category in America that counts. We are fooled and made into money lusters because sports players and entertainers are used by the media to represent all the monetary success of blacks. No other race does it of such magnitude and they are horrible examples of financial success. You see them, they flaunt their money in your face while drinking, smoking, cussing, using the N-word. They lower our self-esteem by reminding us every chance they get of how broke we are. So if you look at their true numbers and break them down, their success is equivalent to hitting the lottery. In our community, we have a bunch of lottery leaders. Between our lottery leaders and the media, we sit back and talk millionaire talk, and we're broke. Hey man, he signed a new contract, and they only gave him three million, and we're broke. We always hear how rich white families are philanthropists. They're always giving. Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, to name a few. That's charity, and charity is love. The Bible teaches us that love and charity are the same thing. In all of these negative statistics of black people, I stumbled across the gold. Of all the races in America, statistically, black people give the most. Even though we have the least, statistically, we give the most. Our core is gold. The Bible says three things will last forever. That's faith, hope, and love. And of these three, the greatest is love. You see, you just can't believe in God. You have to believe God. And I, for one, I believe God. I am not a Bible authority. But in closing, here's a quick Bible story for our young people. Whether you believe or not, the reason a lot of us lust for money is because we don't believe the promise of God. And God promised us wealth. And through his servant Solomon, you can see his promise. You see, Solomon was known for his judgments, his wisdom, and his concubines. God told Solomon, he said, Solomon, I love you. Do you want more women, money, things? Whatever you want, I'm going to give it to you. And Solomon's reply by today's standards was unbelievable. And Solomon said, Lord, just allow me to seek and obtain more knowledge and wisdom. It appeared that God was floored by his answer. And God's reply was, Solomon, since you want knowledge and wisdom, 
I'm gonna give you everything else. So to my young people out there, if you seek knowledge and wisdom first, well, the relationships, the money, the cars, the things are just a byproduct of your knowledge and wisdom. So aside from the sports and entertainment, young people aspire for the higher callings and careers in life. Now, you don't have to be religious to see the success of a lawyer, a doctor, a civil engineer, even a small successful business owner. You can see the things that they have from seeking knowledge and wisdom. 